Welcome, I'm so glad you're joining me. For those of you who are just starting, the Orca Swim Show is a weekly show where I bring both information about how the brain works when embarking on change, especially something that is fearful, and we take it to the lab of the swimming pool. After 30 years of teaching in the pool, it's time to hop out of the water and share how the learning works in and out of the water in the same way. The water is a perfect lab to test the learning process because you get fast and immediate feedback along with very satisfying rewards. When you focus on the needs of the brain-body connection and not just a list of skills, then you can obtain lasting and satisfying results. Our pool is a warm 92. Let's hop in and go from regret and missing out to action and freedom. Okay, welcome to today's episode. I'm excited to talk to you about legs kicking. <clears throat> now, before we get started, I want to let you in on a little secret here, which is in our swimming lessons, we don't start teaching kicking until you are happy and comfortable and free in deep water. What? <laughs> How could that be? I'm sure if you've ever taken a swimming lesson before, they you know, started with things like put your face in the water, maybe float a little bit, now start kicking. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm not exactly sure why they do that. I think it comes out of kids swimming lessons and just giving people something to do. You know, you line all those kids up on the wall and tell them to start kicking and they warm up and they're organized and they're occupied. I think it has much to do with that. <laughs> Anyways, we don't start with a kick because um, there are other things to learn first that are more important and um, are much easier to learn. You, um, but I do want to tell you some stuff because people are interested in kicking and I want to give you some steps today on how to allow for a real natural kick that you can play with if you want to. So let's get started. Um, let me get my slide going here. There we go. So why is the kicking so hard? Why don't we start with the kicking? So, um, you know, the first thing about our legs is they are just super far away from what's important to us, right? Our breathing is what's important to us. This is where our focus is. This is where our concern is. We, you know, going under the water, am I ever going to get another breath again, right? This is where our energy is, and it should be. You want to be really reliable about your breath before you can focus on something that's so far away called your feet. They're just really far down there. They're hard to have your attention in them when you don't know if you're ever going to breathe again. So the other thing is that our feet, they are the first things to go when we're nervous or anxious, right? You think about um, somebody who's going to give a speech and they're pacing around out of control, or you're sitting and you've got your legs shaking and wiggling when you're anxious and you're nervous. They're just so, again, far away. They're the first things that we start to lose control of, lose concentration with, um, you know, in a bad movie horror movie, and they're running away, they, if they weren't scared, they wouldn't trip over their own feet, but they always do, right? We lose control of them when we don't have presence of mind through our whole body. The other thing with our feet is it's not this easy one-to-one -one correlation. You know, when you are moving around in land and you're walking, you get the power from the bottom of your foot. When you go to walk, you push on the ground with the bottom of your foot. Of course, you're using your leg muscles and uh, for balance and strength and all these kinds of things, but you really feel the power of it out of the bottom of your foot. In swimming, the power doesn't come from the bottom of your foot. It comes from the top of your foot, maybe the inside of your foot, the inside of your knee or, the, your, or your legs, in these different places that we're not used to getting power from. And this is back to why the hands, the hands is what we teach first. Those are the powerhouse in swimming and beginning swimming. 
because the power in your hands comes from the palm of your hands. And we're very used to getting information from the palm of our hands and using the palm of our hands for things. So there's, it's a much easier correlation to get the hands than it is the feet. But <clears throat> we'll move on and talk about how we can get some information from them. So the first thing that we always have to start with, because remember, like 80% of learning is in the mind first, is about the mind, the mindset. We have to get our thoughts organized and together to create our feelings that we need to have for learning. So um, it's our, our, our thoughts, we need to examine where those are at. So when you go into the water, and you have a thought about kicking, you know, and your thought is something like, it's really hard, I'm worried I'm not gonna get anywhere, um, I have to move really quickly and figure out something fancy, something like that. Your feelings are gonna be something of, I have to work hard or anxious or, um, and that is going to influence your actions. Right? So if you have a feeling of anxiety and of worry, your actions are going to show that. They're going to be stiff, really splashy, doing really hard stuff. And this gives you your results, being tired, confused, not knowing what's happening, not knowing what's going on. So we want to see and, and start with changing our thoughts. Let's see if we can have a different thought, a thought that is believable. Um, so maybe it's a thought that says something like, I have legs and I know how to move them, right? You, you could probably get up right now and walk over and get yourself a drink or um, whatever it is. You know how to move your legs. And if you go in the water with that kind of a thought, what would your feeling be like? You know, something like, um, I'm skilled, I know how to move my legs, I'm comfortable with my legs, um, my legs are good, <laughs> you know, a good feeling, more of a positive feeling. And then your actions will be something like, you can tell your legs to do things. You could, and the things that you could tell your legs to do would be things like, bending at the knees, wiggling your toes, moving your ankles, right? You can tell it to do these, your legs to do things. things. And your result would be that you could have much more presence to the information that, of the actions. Oh, when I bend my knees in the water, this is the action that's created. This is, this is the result. I thought it was going to be something else, but this is what it is. Well, that's interesting. And then you can be on that loop. Hmm, I wonder what happens when I bend my legs more or where I feel it on my legs. I can get more information. And this puts us on a different trajectory. And this is the kind of trajectory of discovery that we need to be with on our legs. So if you want to play with some legs in the water, um, here is some stuff I would have you start with is just playing around with how do they move? What can I do with them? Not trying to get yourself in a particular direction or going somewhere, but just bringing your connection down into your legs and saying, legs, can I bend you? Can I swirl you around? How can I discover with you and play with you and just feel where I am connected to the water, what happens to the rest of my body when I move my legs. You know, um, we don't want to start with saying I'm trying to go in a particular direction or way because then we'll be on a way that says this must be wrong or I'm not doing it right or I don't know what I'm doing or this is hard. We just want to be on a road of discovery and connection and saying, yes, I know what's going on down there, way far away from my breathing. Now, here's a little video just to show, these are, I'm in a vertical position here, but 
just to show different ways that people have used their legs through time. None of these things are the correct way or the way you have to do it, but they're ways to just be connected to the water. I'm connecting with the water here on the top of one foot and the back of my calf with my other foot and the front of my calf on one of them is just feeling the connection. This one happens to be called a scissor kick that I'm doing here. For you to just play these, all of these kicks, this one is a whip kick where I'm getting the connection with the inside of my foot as it goes around the inside of my foot, the arch of my foot, the inside of my legs. I, as I'm pulling my legs up, I'm doing it in such a way that there is no resistance. And when I squeeze my legs together, I'm finding resistance. These are the kinds of connecting pieces that we want to discover. You don't want to copy exactly what I'm doing, but to feel what your own legs do. Now, in the membership, uh, for people who are members of our program, I have added a lesson about how to do the flutter kick. This is the flutter kick here. And this is a kick that's commonly used in front crawl and used in a lot of swimming. But in the meantime, I want you to keep in mind who invented the flutter kick or any of the other named kicks. It was someone just like you who didn't know what they were doing but they went to the water and experimented. Perhaps they had watched some fish and they said, let me copy them. Or they simply started moving their legs and made a connection with the water and with the results they got. Most new discoveries are not on purpose. They come as a side pro uh, product. It's this idea of uh, failing forward. <laughs> They were trying for something, that's not what they got, but they got something else. Because, um, this is because you cannot look for something that has been found before. You have to discover it. For you, you are the number one person in the water. For you to discover how your body in the water works together. This is because you are the first person to go into the water with your exact body. We can, no two humans walk in exactly the same way, right? No two humans will kick in exactly the same way. Think about when we make robots, we can, tr we can program a robot to walk, but it walks really awkwardly. We can give them a formula, but it, we still haven't given them a brain to feel their way into walking. You have a brain to be able to feel your way into kicking. Have fun with it. Enjoy the process. Know that you're a born swimmer. When you're ready to come learn with us, we're here for you. Thanks for listening. Are you ready to take some action? Three ways to the freeway. Subscribe, join a free webinar, get started online where we break down the steps, making them simple, and we support you along the journey. So maybe you'll join us in Hawaii. Jump on over to orcaswimschool.com.